Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. Today we're going to talk about a new update to the Onion operating system for the Miu Mini. Now there are two major operating systems available for the Miu Mini, both Mini UI and Onion. And I like both of these operating systems a lot, but for different reasons. For me, Mini UI is a much more simple interface, and for me I think that very simple approach is very fitting with the Miu Mini. So Mini UI is a text-based operating system that has some really nice features like a universal menu setting and the ability to autosave when you shut down the device and then auto load when you turn it back on. And so essentially this operating system gets out of your way and so that you can focus on just the games. In fact a few months ago I gifted some Miu Minis to my siblings and I decided to put Mini UI on there. None of them are gamers but I knew they could figure out the menu. But there have been some significant updates to Onion OS over the past month or so and so I wanted to make a video here showcasing some of these updates. And one of my favorite things about this new Onion OS update is that it streamlines the experience very very similarly to Mini UI. And so now all of a sudden I have a device that is both feature rich as well as super simple if you want it to be. And to me that's a beautiful combination. And so in today's video I'm going to update my old version of Onion OS from 3.10 to 4.0, the most recent release. And I'll show you some of these new features and tweaks along the way. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, to start, you're going to want to have your own micro SD card. I'm obviously going to update the one that I have, but you could use any card from scratch. Just bear in mind it needs to be formatted for FAT32. And I'll have links to all those tools in the written guide in the video description. Either way, your best source of information is actually going to be the Onion Wiki page. And I'll have links to all this as well, but essentially you want to go to the installation page and then just follow these instructions. Number one, you may need to update the actual firmware on the device, and there are instructions here, but if you bought your Mio Mini fairly recently you probably won't need to do this. Either way, just check your firmware, make sure you're good to go, and then you just need to download the installation files. Here we're just going to go to the latest GitHub release, which is 4.03 as of making this video. We will download the zip file and save it on our computer. And if you look at the rest of the installation instructions, it shows you two different paths. The first is if you're going to do it on an empty SD card, and the other shows you if you want to upgrade from the stock operating system or a previous version of Onion. And honestly, the process is very similar. So now that we've downloaded that zip file, let's go ahead and extract it so we can access all those files inside. And within here it should look something like this, you'll have a series of about six different folders. And so here is my SD card, which you can see already has a bunch of Mio Mini stuff in it, but even if it was blank you would do the same thing. And that is, you would take all these folders from that zip file and you would drag them over to your SD card. It'll take about 15-20 seconds to move everything over, and if you're upgrading it's going to give you a prompt and ask you if you want to replace the files, and yes you do. So just go ahead and click on that button and we're good to go. And that's it, we've actually installed Onion OS. All we have to do now is eject our SD card and put it back in our device. Now as I'm booting up the device, you may notice that I have a Retro Game Core boot logo. And I actually made a video about how to do this, and so I'll have a link to that in my written guide as well. Either way, once you get past that boot logo, you will be greeted with the Onion installer. Because we're doing an upgrade, it has three options here, either update, reinstall, or update the OS. Now update means it's going to preserve your settings, reinstall means it's going to just install everything and reset your settings, and then the last one will only update the operating system and RetroArch. Because it's been a pretty big jump between 3.9 and 4.0, the Onion OS team actually recommends using the reinstall method. And that's just to make sure that the old and the new versions of Onion OS are going to work better together. So we're going to go ahead and reinstall the OS here. It's going to take a minute here to prepare the installation. And as it's installing, they actually give you the option to flip through some of the new features and options that are available in Onion OS version 4. By the way, you can also peruse all of these same features directly on their GitHub page too. They've really streamlined this wiki to the point where it's a pleasure to kind of page through. Anyway, once it's done with this installation part, it'll take you through a quick guide here, and this is the same one we've seen for a while now. It's going to talk about some of the games and the expert mode and the ability to use apps as well. On top of that, it'll give you a quick rundown of the hotkeys. We'll talk more about this later in the video. And that's about it. After the credit scene, we are ready to get into the package manager next. Now that might sound a little bit intimidating, but it's actually super simple. Here you just want to choose which emulators you want to have installed on your device. And so now you can just kind of scroll through all of these and pick the systems you plan on playing games with. And as I'll show you later in the video, it's very easy to get back to the package manager in case you want to add or remove certain systems. Either way, once you're happy with your selections, go ahead and press the start button and that's going to install all those emulators onto your device. After you're done installing those emulators, it's going to show you a couple other tips and tricks, and then the device is actually going to shut down. And this is a perfect time to start adding our games and BIOS files. 
And so this is what your SD card will look like when you put it back in your computer. The two main folders you're probably going to want to deal with are the BIOS folder and the ROMs folder. Now one thing I should mention because this happens all the time, there's a little folder up there at the top that says temp update. And while it sounds like a temporary folder, it is not. That is required to run the operating system, so do not delete that folder unless you want to have a bad day. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out that ROMs folder to give you an idea of how you want to set up your system. And so inside here, you can see are all these subfolders that were created as a result of installing those emulators. And so within each of these, you're going to want to put in your ROM files. And so you might be wondering, where do I find ROMs? And that I can't tell you, but you may also be wondering what file types am I supposed to use? And additionally, you might be thinking, what are BIOS files and why do they matter? Well, luckily, all of that is also addressed on the Onion Wiki page. If you go into the resources section under emulators, you can see an entire listing of all the different emulators, as well as the file types that they require and any BIOS as well. It'll also show you which folder they're supposed to go into, and the developer may have some notes in there as well to help you in case you get stuck. And so what I recommend doing here is go through the list and make sure that all your ROMs files matches what they are expecting as far as the file extensions. And also if there are any BIOS files required for your system, make sure that you hunt those down and then add them to that BIOS folder as well. PS1 is a great example. This one does need BIOS files and as you can see, they are listed right here. Okay, so now that you've added your ROMs and BIOS files, let's go ahead and start up the device and see what we're working with. And as you can see, we have Onion version 4.0.3. Now this interface might look pretty familiar because it looks a lot like the stock operating system as well as older versions of Onion. And really the process to launch your games hasn't changed at all. So you would go into the game section and here you will see all those emulators you chose within the package manager. And then you can select any of them and if you've added any ROM files, they should show up here. Now you just press A to start up the game and play. Now when you tap the menu button, it takes you to another feature called the game switcher. And this essentially is different save states from various games that'll allow you to toggle through as you're playing them. So as you start playing more and more games, and then when you tap on that menu button, you'll see that you can then scroll through any of the games that you've previously played. Now, if you just want to get back to that regular old choose your game menu, then you would press the B button and you'd be back here. Then you can switch between systems and launch a new game and so on and so forth. And like I mentioned, every time you tap that menu button, it's going to save where you are in that game. And then you'll also be able to scroll through your most recent choices. Now, if you don't want to go to the game launcher, but you want to get back to the main menu, what you would do is you would hold onto the menu button for a couple seconds instead of tapping it. That'll take you back to this main menu here directly. And the nice thing is it still saves your place in the game when you close out of it this way as well. So if we start up the game again, it's going to go right back to where we were. So to me, this is a very simple and intuitive way to get through your games. Either you can tap on the button to get into that game launcher and go back and forth, or you can hold onto the button and get back to that main menu directly. Okay, that's how to play the games, but there are a lot of powerful apps that I want to check out as well. Let's start with the tweak section first. Within here, you have all sorts of things you can change. For example, if your battery gets low, you can set this so that it'll turn off when it gets to 4%. But one of my my favorite things is the startup menu within here. Here we can choose to do things like auto resume our last game, or we could boot the device directly into the game switcher or even RetroArch. On top of that, within the main user interface, we can have it start on a specific tab. So for me, I love the idea of being able to start directly into that game's folder. That means when I boot up the device, I'll immediately see all of my systems right there. So as you can see, lots of neat options just in this first menu here. Now within the button shortcuts section, we can do things like enable or disable the vibration, and we can also customize the behavior of that center menu button if we want. So for example, instead of having a long press to get back to the menu, you could swap it out so that you just need to tap it in instead. And these little pieces of customization are really going to make the device be able to be tailor-made for your own experience. Now that being said, the defaults are pretty good and I would recommend those, but if you do want to make some sort of tweaks, this is where you would do it. And you can do these same changes both within the game as well as within the main menu. It's amazing to me because these kind of customizations, even the big systems like Nintendo and Sony, they don't even get this right. Now additionally, you can actually map the X and Y buttons to be hotkeys within the main menu. So by default, the X button will be a search option, but you could also set it up for things like booting into RetroArch or going into the package manager, things like that. Again, just another way that you can customize your user experience. Now, a couple of the options that you may be used to from the previous versions of Onion are actually hidden within the user interface's options. So if you want to see your recent games on the front menu, this is where you would turn it on. And you can also enable things like the battery percentage and the icon names and things like that. And also within here, you can adjust your fast forward rate or you can swap your triggers if you'd rather use R1 instead of R2 and vice versa. Within the tools section, you can do things like adjusting how you want to have your favorites organized. And if you used a Mac to move over all of your files, 
files, then you can use this tool here called Remove OSX System Files. This is going to clean up your file system so you won't have those files that have a dot and an underscore before them. Anyway, some other things that you have within the app section is the ability to search for games if you'd like, or you can start up that quick guide that we saw at the beginning of this video. Additionally, this is where you would go to open up that package manager as well. So if you want to add or remove emulators, this is where you would go directly in the app section. And finally, one of the coolest things about Onion OS in general is the ability to use just a bunch of community-driven themes. As you can see, already embedded in here, you have something like 15 or 16 themes that you could choose from. And I gotta say, these themes really do change up the feel of your operating system. So if you ever get bored with your Mio Mini, this is a great way to spice things up. And it doesn't stop there. If you'd like, you can actually go to the themes repository and download as many as you'd like from here as well. And installing these is super easy. All you have to do is just download the zip file, unzip it, and then move that folder into your SD card in the themes folder. So you have dozens and dozens of options to choose from. And finally, the last app here is an activity tracker. So if you wanted to see how much time you spent on any certain game, you'd be able to go through there. And really, that's about it for the apps. I really appreciate these new tweaks that they have enabled, and I also like how everything is nice and streamlined too. Now to the far right is the settings section, and this one does have some fundamental system settings that you might like. For example, here you can adjust the brightness, and you can also adjust the settings within your display. So if you want increased contrast or saturation, you could do this as well. Now it seems like every Mew Mini screen is different, and so because of that I don't have any recommended settings here. I would just say try it out and see what you like the best. Also, if your theme came with background music, you can go into this setting here and adjust it. So that way you can find that right level of menu music versus the actual volume of your system. Okay, now that we've gone through the menus, let's talk about some of the gaming experience and how that's changed with Onion version 4. To start, let's talk about these hotkeys so that we have our head kind of wrapped around these options. Number one, like I showed earlier, if you tap the menu button, it's going to go into the game switcher. If you hold the menu button for a couple seconds, it'll exit to the main menu. Now this menu button also functions as your hotkey activation button. What that means is when you press the menu button plus any of the others that you see here on the screen, that's when that thing is going to happen. So if you want to see your frames per second, you would hit menu plus X. If you want to get into the RetroArch quick menu, you would hit menu plus select. But the hotkeys you're probably going to use the most are going to be to save and load your state depending on the game you're playing. For this, it's going to be menu plus R2 to save the state and then menu plus L2 to load it. Another one that's really handy is menu plus R. This is going to allow you to fast forward through some cutscenes, or if you're playing a really grindy Pokemon game, this will speed things up as well. And so here I'm playing Yoshi's Island where I've pressed the menu and R button and as you can see, it's running in fast forward. I've also enabled the frames per second so you can see them down here. Now the reason I'm showing this is because the game is working really well even at fast forward. In fact, we're getting about 127 frames per second. Now if we press the menu in R, it'll go right back to the typical 60 frames per second. And yeah, as you can see, one of the hardest games to play on the Super Nintendo now works great on Onion. I remember when this device first came out, and even in some of the earlier versions of Onion, this game didn't play at full speed. But now it runs like a champ, which leads me to believe that any Super Nintendo game is going to play just fine on this device. And like I mentioned, using that fast forward button will speed things up significantly if you're playing something like a role playing game. As you can see here on the Game Boy, we're getting over 500 frames per second, so nearly 10 times speed. So that's a super handy feature if you're playing a role playing game on your Game Boy or Game Boy Advance to be able to speed through. But my cat chicken just jumped on my lap, so I think it's time for a cat break. Now to anyone who's new to the channel, this is my 14 year old cat chicken here. She loves to jump on my lap while I'm filming and get cat hair on everything. So if you ever see cat hair on my screen, that's why. Anyway, let's get back to business. Now one of the other things I haven't talked about a lot with the Miu Mini is that the aspect ratios have all been configured correctly for all these systems. So as you can see here with Game Boy, it is a 10 by 9 aspect ratio. Additionally, now when you power down while playing a game, it'll save your progress right then, and if you start up the game right after that, it's going to boot directly back into that game. This is one of my favorite features in the mini UI operating system, so I'm super happy to see that it's here in Onion OS by default as well. And the reason why I like this so much is because the Miu Mini is such a pocketable and pick up and play device, having the ability to be able to close out of your game at any moment and then open it up and get right back into it is one of the best things about having one of these little portable systems. And so I love the fact that the operating system now works in tandem with the form factor. 
So for the rest of the video now, I'm gonna go through some of these systems and kind of talk a little bit about each of them. We're gonna start with ports, which is another thing that is not available on MinUI, but works really well on Onion. As you can see here, they've already preloaded the menus with all of these ports that are available. And for many of these, they still require the retail files to be added like any other ROM. But some of these are freeware, and because of that, they have them loaded already. A good example here is Cave Story. I've heard this is an incredible game, and it's pretty cool to just be able to boot up into it on Neo Mini. If you've played this game before, let me know how it is because I've been putting it off for years now and I really need to try it. Now for other ports that do require retail files, there is a section within the Onion Wiki to kind of walk you through that process. It doesn't have every single port listed here. I think it's still a work in progress, but most of them are here and it's pretty easy to grab these files. Anyway, essentially all you have to do is go into the ROM section on your SD card, then go into ports and binaries, and then drop in the retail files they have listed here. And if you get stuck on any of these, there's a great video by Retro Breeze about ports, and I'll leave that link to my video description. Now, once you add those commercial files, some of these games run impressively well. For example, Cannonball is a port of OutRun, and man, this thing looks beautiful. 60 frames per second and runs like a dream. And if for some reason you've never played this game before, Doom is available on this as well. It's a little bit weird to go back to D-pad style gaming with a first person shooter, but if you want to, go for it. Either way, it's kind of neat to see that ports are even enabled on the Miu Mini, something I never thought was going to be possible. But of course, we're here mostly to talk about emulation, so let's talk about that next. As you can see, my games menu here is mostly just chock full of the classics. I like to keep things simple. Probably the oddest duck out of all of these is going to be Pico 8. And this one works really well. You can just drop in your Pico 8 files and they will boot right up using the Retro 8 emulator. And so if you're looking for a cute little portable Pico 8 machine, this is going to work great. This also worked really well on previous versions of Onion, so I'm just happy to see that it's here as well. Now, like I mentioned earlier with Link's Awakening, you know, the aspect ratio and scaling is really well done here on Onion. All these games are going to fill out the screen appropriately, and they look super sharp and crisp as well. And the gameplay on these is just great. Everything through Nintendo and Super Nintendo, even trying out the handheld systems like Game Boy Advance, all of these run like a dream. Now, to be honest, the Miu Mini is not the most comfortable device in the world. It's a little bit cramped for the hands, but that's kind of the price you pay for having something as ultra portable as this. A friend of mine recently went on a trip across the country, and he brought a Steam Deck and a Miu Mini. And when he was done with his trip, he sent me a message and said, hey, between the Steam Deck and the Miu Mini, which one do you think I played the most? And as you can probably guess, he said that he only played the Miu Mini and he never touched the Steam Deck once. Now granted, they had a very busy vacation and were doing all sorts of activities, but that honestly is exactly where the Miu Mini shines. If you just want to throw this thing in your pocket and you have a few minutes to kill here or there, the Miu Mini is perfect. And the ability to close out of your game and have that auto save and then auto load as you boot it up is just a really nice feature to embed with it as well. So I would say all the way up through PS1, this thing is a little joy to play. Not the most comfortable thing in the world for long sessions, but great for pick up and play. Okay, and one last feature that I really like about this device, anytime you're playing a game, you can just double tap on the menu button and it's gonna take you back to the last game you were playing. And so if you wanna switch between two games quickly, this is kind of amazing. Now, I'm not really sure if I've ever been in a time where I needed to hop between two games really quickly, but now that this is an option, I'm kind of thinking about some different use cases for it. Either way, I just love this whole menu system now, you know, the single tap to get into the game switcher, the long press to get to the main menu, all of it just seems really well done and intuitive. And so yeah, long story short, I'm loving the new version of Onion OS. When I first got Mini UI up and running, I remember thinking to myself, man, I don't think I'm ever gonna use any other operating system but this one. I just loved how simple it was and how all of the configuration and settings were so streamlined in one single menu. But I gotta admit, I've been kinda won over by this new version four of Onion. I love the idea of being able to boot directly into the game menu to see all these lovely icons right here. And I can tap on the menu button to get into the game switcher anytime I want to jump into something else. So I think at the end of the day, we're almost at peak Miu Mini. We've got two operating systems basically at the height of their game. It's almost like a Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan situation right here. Either way, you can't go wrong with either of these. The real question is going to be whether or not you can get your hands on a Miu Mini, which seems to be perpetually out of stock. Now I've been told they will have a full restock in the next few days, but you never know. And so I'll leave some links to various places you can look for the Miu Mini, and it's one of those things where you just need to check it often. And with any luck, the next time you check, you might have a few available. Either way, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and thanks to the Onion team for putting all this together. And best of luck to you in your Miu Mini hunting. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.